Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 word and to some, well, not very good news if I'm honest, again. It was announced this morning that Williams is considering selling its business and that includes the Formula One team. This announcement comes as the Williams Grand Prix Holdings, that's the WGPH, recorded a loss of £30 million for 2019 compared to a profit of £12.9 million in 2018. In terms of the F1 revenue, that fell as well from 130.7 million in 2018 to 95.4 million last year, while group revenue dropped to 160.2 million in 2019 compared to 176.5 million in 2018. As I've just gone over there, that is based on last year's figures, which of course were pre pandemic. So if that's how things were before all of this, what could some of these teams be facing this time next year when the 2020 figures are revealed? Really worrying times. A statement released this morning reads as follows. The board is undertaking a review of all the various options available to the company. Options being considered include raising new capital for the business, a divestment of a minority stake in WGPH, or of a majority stake in WGPH, including a potential sale of the whole company. The statement goes on to say that whilst there have been no formal offers made at this point, Talks are being held with what they described as a small number of parties regarding a potential investment. As if that wasn't enough though, the team has also confirmed that they have terminated their sponsorship deal with Rokit with immediate effect, with Williams CEO Mike O'Driscoll stating, The 2020 season has of course been disrupted due to the pandemic, and this will have an impact on our commercial rights income this year. The team have also served notice to terminate its relationship with its title partner Rokit and major sponsor Roke Drinks or Rock Drinks. In common with many other businesses, we have taken extensive action to mitigate, including a prolonged furlough period for much of our staff. As this awful global crisis recedes, everyone at Williams Racing is looking forward to the start of the new season. So, no decision as yet on whether they will sell part of or all of the company, but whichever way you want to look at it, Williams are even just in part up for sale. And again, this is all based on the 2019 figures, so some really concerning times ahead for the whole sport. If you want me to give a brief view on all of this, by the way, regarding Williams, I will do so towards the end of the video, but that's not all the bad news this morning. It has also been reported that Renault are planning to cut 14,600 jobs across the entire company, as well as cutting down on production and restructuring some of its French factories. Reports were already circulating that Renault were trying to save more than 2 billion euros, and that has called into question the future of the Renault Formula One team. Frankly, with all the plans to cut staff, particularly a number that high, and then the savings they're chasing as well, I can't see how this won't have some impact on the Formula One side of things. However, when it comes to Formula One, Renault has confirmed that following the agreement of the new cost cap and the cost cutting measures, they are planning to remain in Formula One. Earlier this morning, Renault's interim CEO said, We said publicly and we confirmed that we intend to stay in F1. Actually, the news about the new regulations, new cap in terms of investment is very good for us because we had less investment in this area compared to some of our competitors which were spending a lot of money. So, F1, we are here and we stay in Formula 1. So amidst all of the doom and gloom this morning, that is one huge positive to take away if we take them at their word, of course, but Renault are sticking around and apparently so are Mercedes. Daimler have denied what they've called unfounded and irresponsible reports that the manufacturer is set to leave the sport. Yesterday, reports in Germany claimed that they were on the brink of walking away and taking an increased share in Aston Martin with Toto Wolff leaving the team when his contract expires at the end of this year. However, a statement which was issued to Crash.net via Mercedes said, Speculation regarding a potential withdrawal from Formula 1 continues to be unfounded and irresponsible. The sport has taken the right measures to address the consequences of the pandemic and its future financial sustainability and we welcome these steps. It is our clear intention to continue competing in Formula 1 as a Mercedes-Benz works team in the years to come and to do so with our managing partner, Toto Wolff. There we have it then. Renault are making a huge number of staff redundant but are planning to continue with their F1 operations and Daimler are also adamant that Mercedes are staying put but the future of Williams is far less certain. As already touched on though, these are worrying times for Formula 1 whichever way you look at it and it was inevitable that some big and very tough decisions were going to have to be made. McLaren, as covered yesterday, have already announced that they will be making 1,200 of their staff redundant across its business, with 70 reportedly being laid off from the F1 team. And if companies like McLaren and Renault are struggling and having to make these big decisions already, it is a hugely concerning time for teams who are not as well off as they are, so like Williams, for example. 
On the Williams news, though, they are such an historic team and it will be so sad to lose that name from the grid. But also, and more importantly, to lose the team as a whole and that's staff and all from the grid. So I really hope that whoever buys the team or whatever part they buy takes into account all of that history, that iconic name, and they treat it with the respect it deserves. The name might disappear and that would be a shame, but ultimately it is just a name and it is far more important right now to protect the people that work there by keeping the business afloat. I'm going to end this video though by reiterating a point I made on Twitter this morning. So many people hop into my comment sections, my posts on Twitter and Facebook and many other people's posts on social media too, shouting for the 2020 season to be cancelled and focus on 2021. If these teams and businesses are already in trouble based on their 2019 figures, how are they going to survive once the 2020 figures are released, figures that will include almost nothing from the F1 revenue side of things, if the 2020 season is just called off? And that revenue is something many teams will rely on to survive. The news this morning and all the cost-saving measures being taken are exactly why Formula 1 cannot just write off this year and move all focus to next year, and it's also why we will see some racing at some point this year as soon as it is safe to do so. If that's July, brilliant from a fan's perspective as long as it's done safely. If it's August, fine, September, October, whenever, we will see Formula 1 back this year because if we don't, there is a very, very strong possibility, maybe even a probability, that we will lose multiple teams for 2021, perhaps even the sport itself. That is it though for this video. I will be back on Sunday live at 5pm UK time to discuss all of this and more with Stuart and Dan. But in the meantime, don't forget that you can of course follow me over on social media with all of the links you need for that in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching and hopefully I will catch you again in the next one. Bye bye.